Lego Legends of Chima is actually good. Let me explain. All right, so Lego Legends of Chima is a theme of Lego that ran from 2013 to 2015, and it was all about humanoid animals fighting over Chi. And that's the initial concept of this whole entire series. It had a three season long show, a ton of Lego sets, and a great concept. And now let's get into it with first things first, the initial concept. And the story broken down into a sentence, animals fighting over this powerful energy source called Chi. The tribes of animals get divided, they're fighting for Chi, it makes for a fun story. Humans and animals are two extremely broad concepts. Everyone's seen an animal, and one of the most famous animals is the lion. You've also got crocodiles, gorillas, all sorts of animals that we've grown up with. Animals are an extremely recognizable idea, so when you have a concept and a series and a theme focused so much on animals, it's bound to get the attention of an audience. And I feel like that's what Chima did really well. And honestly, this concept of human animals might be a better concept than the Ninjago concept. With Ninjago, they're ninja, and they learn this martial art where they can spin and make a tornado. That feels like a much more niche concept than human animals. And honestly, I think the concept of Chima is a 7 out of 10. And when you have a magnificent concept, the rest of your theme flows very well. And let's move on to the Lego sets. The Lego sets are quite possibly the best part of this. Lego really embraced their animal theming here and put it in every single one of the machines and you can tell. With the lion machine, they popularized this really rare lion yellow color and it gave the lions a nice standout color for their machines. The majority of line machines were on the ground the eagle's color scheme with the white hints of yellow and different shades of blue worked extremely well in this case and the majority of eagle machines were flying to represent that eagle vibe they did the same thing with the raven machines but making them a little bit more chunky and Cragger's command ship is one of my all-time favorite chima sets and i never got it sadly but the olive green color that they used for this massive boat made it look very crocodile-esque with the highlights of red and the sharp teeth coming out from every direction Direction. One of my personal favorite Chima sets I ever got was Gorzon's Gorilla Striker with a huge smashing fist function, a banana cannon, and a super bulky body. At a glance, you could easily tell if this was a spider machine or a bat machine. Oh, this is obviously a scorpion machine. The vision was very clear for this theme, and I think it paid off very well. Another great machine was the Ice Mammoth, and this time they really just made this big mechanical mammoth. And it honestly looks fantastic with the dark brown, transparent blue, and it even has a helicopter that can come off the top. And besides these machines looking really fun, they had amazing functions too. For example, Lavertus's twin blade had an amazing dual propeller function. Some of the machines could really transform like Laval's Fire Lion. Braptor's Wing Striker, which was a Lego set I was obsessed with as a kid, had a really cool function where you could push on a lever on the back and the wings would flap forward. A lot of these Chima sets definitely looked better than others. They also made Speedors, which in my opinion are way better than Ninjago Spinners. These Speedors had a ripcord that you could pull out of them. They were basically like one-wheeled motorcycles and they would rip along the ground and you had obstacle courses you could set up for them. I remember playing with Speedors for hours as a kid, collecting the chi and even the playing cards work really well. The Fire and Ice Wave Speedors definitely didn't look as cool to me as the original ones. They tried to make action figures, but honestly, the only action figures that really ever worked for me were the Bionicles and Hero Factory. The minifigures in these sets were always decked out with the craziest weapons, shields, swords, and guns. Each tribe had a unique head mold that went on top of a normal minifigure head, but just remember, never take those heads off. And besides the machine, some of the structures were amazing too. For instance, the Lion Chi Temple, definitely the stand out here. This was an amazing $120 castle that I wanted so badly. And yeah, I definitely think the strongest aspect of Chima was the Lego sets. The minifigures are great, the weapons were fantastic, the machines were awesome, and overall, I'm going to give Lego sets an 8 out of 10 here. Now let's talk about the Chima TV show. This series had three seasons. Cragger was a villain, manipulated by his sister, and stole Chi. The tribes were all divided, and finally, once they worked that out, the bats, scorpions, and spiders from the Outlands came and stole all the Chi from Mount Kavora. The heroes had to venture into the Outlands, which was a really cool, swampy area, but at the end of that season, Chi falls into a very deep gorge and wakes up some frozen warriors that have been asleep for centuries. These frozen warriors march across the land and have to be stopped by the fiery phoenixes. 
Now, first off, let's talk about my experience with this show. I watched the first season when it came out when I was like nine or 10. And then back last year, I finally watched the rest of Chima and the first season carries a lot of nostalgia for me. All right, so let's talk about what I love about this Chima show. For starters, the animation, it's, it's not like fantastic, but they make it feel very real and beautiful. And that makes the whole entire world lush and vibrant. Compared to Dreams, which just came out a couple months ago, the animation for Chima is so much better. Now, I'm not saying it's the best animation ever, and I've definitely seen better animation, but for being 10 years old, this animation blew me away. Another thing I love about Chima is the world building and the world itself. It's such a fun and vibrant world. It's like the Lion Chi Temple, the Eagle Spire, the Croc Swamp, the Wolf Hideout. There's so many different locations here, and the world building that they do, you have a feel of kind of where everything is, in your mind. Lion Temple is in the middle and then you have the different tribe bases in different directions and with every season you keep getting new aspects of this world like the Outlands and finally on top of Mount Kavor you have the Phoenixes. One more thing I will say I like about this show is that the animal tribes have different personalities and they actually match the animals themselves like the lions are always honorable, good. The crocodiles are always kind of slimy and angry. You've got the ravens that are very deceptive, the wolves that have a hot temper, and the gorillas, which are some of my favorites, are super low-key and chill all the time. Now, this show is not perfect by any means. Some of the voices here are extremely annoying. Eris, even Cragger gets kind of annoying. Laval has a kind of whiny voice sometimes. They definitely could have worked on getting better voices for this show. Maybe they put too much work into the graphics and how the world looks instead of putting the work into the mechanics and choreography because there's no really interesting fight sequence in this whole entire show. Everything moves at a slow pace and that can be really hard to watch sometimes. And the script is also plain, simple, uninteresting, and they try to make jokes in here, they try to make you laugh so hard, it never works. I don't know why they put in that little bird thing that cleans Cragger's teeth. He is so annoying. I wish Craig would just bite down on that guy so badly. The last thing is there's plenty of skippable episodes. This show is very episodic and I think that's where it hurts a lot. My favorite season is the middle one. It has quite a bit of filler, but once they get to the Outlands, they're actually going on a mission to find the legend beasts and reclaim all their chi. And you're going on this adventure and that's what's fun. But there's a lot of episodes that are kind of slow and boring. Boring, especially once you get to the third season. Some of the first season episodes are actually fun standalone episodes, plenty of repetitious episodes, and it just doesn't cut it for me. I think there might be a little too much bad in this for it to go above five, so I'm going to give it a five out of 10. Each of these three categories had 10 points Chima could have earned, and it earned 20 points, which puts it in the 20 to 25 category on my Lego theme tier list. We have a bunch of other themes we can go through, but first let's examine why did Chima fail and why is it not going still today? And the first reason I have here is because the sales dropped with every new wave that came out. Honestly, at the end of the day, Lego is there to make money. They're their own business and they have to have good profit or else they'll stop making it. But Chima only lasted till 2015 before it was canceled. Another reason that may have played into the decrease of sales is that people love villains. And especially with the first season of Chima, it was really hard to tell who's the villain. You get a crocodile machine or you get a gorilla machine, just looking at them, you can't really tell, oh, this is a bad guy machine, this is a good guy machine. They're just all animals. How are we supposed to know that ravens are bad and gorillas are good? And in the show, they did that really well where they're all kind of good, but some of them can be ma manipulated in different ways. But still, I think people love villains and when you can't quite tell who the villains are, it's not the best. And the last thing is, Chima had steep competition with Ninjago. Chima was made to replace Ninjago, but they brought back Ninjago, which I'm super happy they did, but it definitely hurt Chima. The fans went back to Ninjago. I was just kind of getting into Lego as Ninjago came around, and then once Chima hit, I was all for Chima. I really loved Chima so much. And I will say, I do like Ninjago more than Chima. Chima had a good run, but Ninjago came out on top. So those are three reasons why Chima may have failed and we never got an underwater theme of Chima. I was hoping my whole childhood, I even made mocks 
of underwater team up. Okay, that would have actually been a kind of dumb idea. Now, my final thoughts on the theme. In my opinion, Chima was amazing. Chima did its job, and it made my childhood better. Peace out. Subscribe.